Hello everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. On this channel, we try to solve the problems which are frequently asked in programming interviews. We try to build the solutions in a stepwise manner and then talk about the space and the time complexity which is asked in the interviews. Now, the problem which we are going to look today is the number of the subsequences that satisfy a given sum condition. Let us go through the problem statement. In this, we are given an integer array nums and another integer target. We have to return the number of non-empty subsequences of nums such that the sum of sum of the minimum and the maximum element on it is less than or equal to a given target. Now, for example, if we have the given array as 3, 5, 6 and 7 and the target is 9, the possible subsequences are 3 because in this case the minimum and the maximum is 3 itself and the summation of minimum and, and maximum is equals to 6 which is, is smaller than 9 so this is a possibility then we have 3 and 5 as a possibility because in this case the summation is 8 then 3 5 and 6 is another possibility and 3 and 6 is another one in both of them the summation is 9 which is equals to the target and which is allowed now we cannot take 6 and 7 because then the summation would be 13 I guess and that would exceed the target similarly we cannot take 5 and 6 so if we look at the solution to this the first obvious thing would be to generate all the possible subsequences which are non-empty and then check the smallest and the greatest element in those subsequences and then figure out whether we can consider this one or not but the, to generate all the subsequences the time it is going to take is exponential so let me quickly explain you what do you mean by subsequences let us have one two and three so these are the three, three elements which are present in the nums array now if we consider we have to generate non-empty subsequences so there should be an element which is fixed let us consider 1 as the fixed element. So if 1 is the fixed element, then we have 2 and 3. They could be present there or they could not be present there. Then if we have 2 as the fixed element, then 1 could be present and could not be present and similarly 3. And another possibility is to have 3 as fixed element and 1 and 2 as optional. Now if we are generating for this one, we will have 1. 2 and an option for 3 and we have 1 and 2 is not there then an option for 3 here we will have 1 2 3 here we will have 1 2 and 3 is not present here also we have two choices 1 2 is not present and 3 is there 1 2 is not present and 3 is not there as well. Similarly, we will have choices for this and this. So on each step, we will have choices. There, there will be two choices for each element. So for 2, there were two choices. For 3, there were two choices. So in total, there were four choices for this one. So we got 1, 2 and 3, 4. So these are the four subsequences which are non-empty. They have a sure element or a fixed element which is 1 same is the scenario when we have 2 as the fixed element and 3 as the fixed element so these are the subsequences now we cannot generate all of them because uh, that would take 2 raised to the power n time if we have n optional elements so what instead we can do is we can go with another approach which is similar to a problem called twosome which is a very uh, famous problem so first I will discuss what that problem says and then I will try to explain the same problem using that approach. Now let us say the given array is 1, 3, 5, 9, 11, 20. Now let us say the summation which I want is 14. So the problem to sum is asking us to tell whether there are two elements which are present inside the array. The result of the summation of those two elements should be equals to the target which is 14. So I have to tell whether those two elements are present or not. The given array is sorted 
and I will start from the first and from the last. So it is a two-pointer approach. I will see the summation of these two elements first. The summation of these two elements is 21. As I know that 21 is larger than 14, that means I have to reduce something. So obviously I'm going to reduce the larger element and it will now come to 11. Now the summation will be 11 plus 1 which is equals to 13 which is smaller than what we need. So we will move forward and increase the smaller element. Now the summation will be equals to 11 plus 3 which is equals to 14. Now this is what we actually need and then we will return true in this case. We are going to stop if we are not able to find such a, a solution and in case had it been 15 I don't think yeah 15 this would result in the collision of start and end and as soon as start and end are colliding I will return false in that case so this is the approach and how we can implement the same approach in this case as well now here we are taking an example 2 3 3 4 6 7 I think this is the example 4 3 3 4 6 7 2 3 3 4 6 7 and now I will apply the same approach as we were using in the two sum problem here is the starting and the ending index the target which is given to us is 12 12 is the target now the summation of 2 and 7 is 9 which is less than it is less than the target so this can in fact be a possible uh, subsequence and for this I will keep 2 as fixed so I will be left with 1 2 3 4 and 5 optional elements which is 2 raised to the power of 5 this is equals to 32 so this is my first answer this is my uh, one of the answer then I will keep adding all the possibilities into our answer and then finally return now as we can see that it was 9 as the summation now we can uh, try to increment the start pointer now it will come to 3 the summation is 7 plus 3 which is equals to 10 and which is smaller than 12 this is also permissible so the range from here to here is also permissible I will keep 3 as fixed and 1 2 3 and 4 4 optional elements 2 raised to the power 4 which is equals to 16 this is my second part of the answer then again I will increment this and I will be having 2 raised to the power 3 this time which is equals to 8 now I will increment it again because again the summation was 10 which is smaller than 12 now I will get the summation as 11 this is also smaller than 12 so in this case it will be 7 plus 4 which is equals to 11 and optional elements are 2 2 raised to the power 2 is 4 so this is my fourth part of the answer then I will increment this again in this case the first element will be 6 and the last element will be 7 the summation will be 13 which will exceed the given target and this will not be considered now in this case I will not add anything to the answer and here I will decrement the last pointer so now both the pointers are at 6 and the starting and the ending elements are 6 the number of optional element is 0 so 2 raised to the power 0 which is equals to 1 this is the fifth answer let me combine all of them it will give us 40 50 56 56 plus 5 which is equals to 61 the answer was 61 yes it is correct so 61 is the answer in this case this is the strategy that I'm going to apply and let me try to explain it with the code I will be talking about the time complexity in just a moment now so initially our starting point will be 0 our end will be target dot size minus one sorry nums dot size minus one while start is smaller than equals to end 
if the summation of if nums of start plus if this is smaller than equals to target then answer plus equals to power 2 and minus start so and minus start is basically one less than the number of elements which are present in the current subsequence because one element is fixed there so this is what we have to add to our answer and in this case we have to do s plus plus because we are smaller than or equals to the target else in all the other cases we have to do n minus minus finally we have to return our answer and yes it is going to handle some cases but not all of the cases that we are going to see in a while in answers equals to zero four let me run this for another test cases see it is giving us correct answer for all of the mentioned test cases but it will not give us correct answer because the answer could be very huge and we have to take the modulo as well so this thing over here this power this will exceed the integer integer limits and it will give us something it will give us a wrong value which is not what we actually want so we should take the modulo while we are uh, taking the power we are, while we are considering the powers for that I will have to implement this power function by myself and that I will implement using this helper function using recursion so this is x raised to the power of y at the same time I have to I will have to take modulo so modulo is something that I am going to hash define hash define mod as 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7 this this is my modulo to calculate x raised to the power 9 I will do this using binary exponentiation so in case y is equals to 0 so something raised to the power 0 is 1 if x is equals to 0 return 0 if y the power modulo 2 is equals to 0 that means it is even in that case what we can do is we can calculate an answer which is equals to help of x raised to the power y by 2 and then we can do answer multiplied by equals to answer In case it is odd, we can do int answers equals to help of x comma y minus 1. Now y minus 1 would be even, but we will have to multiply the answer by y. And then we can return the answer. So we can declare answer outside both of them. Answers equals to 1. So this is the strategy but I will have to include this modulo as well and for that to handle the corner cases I am going to take long instead of int here. Long answers equals to 1. It should give me long as well. Here I will return answer mod. answer modulo equals to mod here also mm, okay it is handling those cases let me see I will try to improve this if I find that the answer is wrong so instead of this we can do help Yes, answer 
modulo equals to mod what's the error the error is use of undeclared okay the spelling of return is false the answer is wrong because we are not calculating the powers okay there's something else which we need to handle if y equals to 1 then we have to return x x multiplied by equals to y y divided by 2 answer multiplied by equals to answer is more than equals to target I think all of this is correct but this power function is not functioning properly so the problem is with this one when it is odd I am subtracting the power by 1 and then sending it and in that case I have to multiply this with x now it should give us the correct answers let me try to run this and then I will improve if there are wait a second expected is it was working fine for all of those cases for okay I okay so the nums array which is given to us is not already sorted we have to sort it sort nums dot begin comma nums dot end if we see the answer for the last case is 56 it is correct okay so it got accepted the time complexity if we consider n as the number of elements in nums the time complexity is big o of n log n for this sort function big o of n for this one but that doesn't matter much now because we already have something as large as n log n so this is the final complexity of this the space complexity is constant this function will okay so this is a binary exponentiation function so it is a logarithm exponent uh, this is a logarithm function y could be as large as the size of the array which is n and in this case this will give us our answer in log of n so both of these sort function as well as this while loop will result in n log n because n for this while loop and inside the while loop while we are calculating this answer we are going to use helper function which is a log n so n multiplied by log n for this one as well if you like the solution please don't forget to leave a thumbs up you can also provide me suggestions in the comment section so you can tell me whether i should make tutorial videos or interview experiences thank you